Hello, welcome to the program. Here are the headlines in the Northeast tonight. In recent news, a fan favorite Bonehilda has been reported as missing. She was last seen in The Sims 3 Supernatural. The Sims YouTuber and variety streamer, Plum Bella, blames her disappearance on E-Games' lack of recognition for law. Where's Bone Hilda? Bring me back my maid. A skeleton maid. The return of the Bone Hilda skeletal maid from The Sims making magic. She is freaking out about Bone Hilda over here. Why is that skeleton wearing my uniform? Wait a minute, how is that skeleton doing anything at all? Come here and awaken Bone Hilda. Just for Bone Hilda. Hey, hands. How are we all diddly doing? So, I had a very popular series on my channel called The Entire History of. It was the first kind of series of mine that actually took off, and now I'm known as a half for law in The Sims community. Law is integral to a game. Look at The Sims 2. We're still talking about Bella Goth. You've been asking for another entire history of and I'm not gonna lie to you. I wanted to come back for the fucking band. I didn't just want to do any old family. I didn't just want to do any old thing. Today we're gonna be talking about the queen that is Born Hilda. Relax. Relax. This is for you, you weak, uh, white, nasty, smelling, bad bitch. Why you don't know never off another fucking schedule with all the magic bitch? Oh, great, nasty, bad bitch. You don't know about that. It's just a public disclaimer that that is actually a very, very popular meme and I'm in no way threatening EA. So please don't remove me from the Game Change program thanking you. I'm just out here to get some recognition for the underdog and today, and for every day for that matter, that underdog is Bornhilda. Bitch. <laughs> You're like, shit, I just want her back. Look at her little bonnet. She's smiling at me. <laughs> so a few people understand why this whole campaign that I've been starting for like well over a year now is so important. I kind of need to let you know about our little old bony Hildy. A lot of you start playing with this game in The Sims 4 and that is fine. I myself have been playing The Sims since the year 2000, so personally that could never be me. But playing The Sims since it first came out is like one of the only impressive things about me. I mean like little Simsy's last name is literally Sims. I can't compete with that, so sorry if I've got to flex on these whores, stunt on these whores by saying that I've been playing The Sims since the year 2000. Technically 2003 is when we first met Bone Hilda, right? That's when The Sims Making Magic came out. 2003 was a truly, absolutely magical year. Let me set the scene. I was already a pro gamer at The Sims at that point. Mad I was in that game, perfecting my craft. The phrase, it's just a game, is such a weak mindset. Also, the first two Harry Potter films were out, right? Now, you just know what that means to me. I was big, fat, fucking hooked. So, imagine my pure, undiluted elation at a computer fair with me dad when I saw The Sims making magic on a table. It's like your favourite anime crossover, right? But it happened to me in real life. And this, guys, gals, and non-binary pals, is where I met my soulmate, Bone Hilda, which YouTube auto-generated captions translates into foot porn held her sometimes. So we'll, we'll have fun with that one, rewind and have a look. And I've been researching my little ass off and found some theories on why Bone Hilda isn't actually featured in the Little Sims games. Now, honestly, they're, they are a bit of a reach, right? And totally glimpsing over the fact that EA just a point blank refusing to put her in the game at this point. But it is kind of fun to hide the sad truth of reality with a little bit of theory, is it not? So even though I personally first met Bone Hilda in 2003, the Sims games are actually in a timeline. Not everybody knows that. So I always feel like I have to clarify it in every video so it starts off with The Sims 3. Then The Sims 1 is set 25 years after The Sims 3. Then we move on to The Sims 2 timeline. And then The Sims 4 is just, it's a whole nother kettle of fish, to be honest. I will never understand the decision that EA took to put that in an alternate timeline and just ruin any kind of law. Don Lothario is in a relationship with Nina and Dina's mum. I, I mean, surely that's illegal somewhere. I don't make the game, so I've got no control over that. So let's start off with The Sims 3 timeline and let me introduce you to our beautiful... Beautiful angle, Born Hilda. Born Hilda did come with The Sims 3 Supernatural, so in The Sims 3 Supernatural, the law is kind of that supernaturals and just normal human beings live together almost in a state of harmony, if you will. Everybody's getting along, everybody's fine, we're friends, some people are kind of living in secret and they're a little hidden, but they both live about the same place, they can both like freely roam around and they're not confined to one area. It's pretty open and free, Born Hilda is thriving, love. She's employed, she's loving it, and she is just all around amazing at a job. Like, you need some cleaning? Born Hilda will do for your hen. Dog's a bit feral, she'll train it. TV broke, not when Born Hilda's around, she's never heard of it. Need a drink and buddy, that's fine, because Born Hilda do be a bit of a why no? Fire on the lot, she's immune to it, mate. And if you get robbed, Bone Hilda will literally fight the fucker. All guns are blazing. She will defend your household. She's essentially a guard dog. She's honestly a multi talented queen. Don't have an actual maid see her, because if an actual maid sees her, she'll just be fucking terrified and quit. And I can relate because I don't know what's more terrifying. Seeing a literal skeleton walking about your house or a literal skeleton being better at your job than you. Bone Hilda is my employee of the month every month. 
I'll just state that. <laughs> and she does this all for free and all, all you have to do is buy a little coffin and rat-a-tat-tat on the door and make her come out and she'll come help you. She's truly selfless. So in summary, she's mint. Truly no fault. Apart from drinking on shift, but she's also got no body or blood for that matter. So it's not like it's going to go no blood system. So we sound don't worry about it but also the name in itself i think is a little bit of a pun i think there's some kind of wordplay going on there she lives in like this closet thing which is it's essentially a coffin just just stood up do you know what i mean you might not recognize it because you usually see coffins like like that but no it's stood up defying gravity and she's in it and she's a skeleton so it's kind of like there's some skeletons in a closet and there is some pop-ups in the sims 3 as well where it talks about bornhilda having secrets and stuff like that her only secret is how she's so good at that job let me tell you she's amazing so that's basically her in the sims 3 and then in the timeline we jump from the sims 3 supernatural to the sims 1 making magic where she's still there she's still thriving she is still a skinny legend she still likes to drink and she does wave her gravestone sometimes but that's just who she is and she basically does everything everything that she does in the sims 3 as well but she also feeds babies babies in the sims 1 without even waking them up like truly talented she is supposed to look after kids in the sims 3 but apparently it just doesn't work things are a little broke so she can't actually help out your kids in the sims 3 so you still might need a babysitter just in case anybody's interested i don't know 100 percent if that's true i just know that it's definitely not our queen's fault and i'm definitely placing the blame on a year for this one so just leave bonehilder alone thanking you and you can still buy a coffin and play with her in that way but in the sims 1 she's also available in magic town which truly is a magical town and she's basically a janitor for a spooktacular lot on Vernon's vault. So when you play The Sims 1 with making magic, basically you start with a family and then someone knocks on your door, uninvited, uh, just that, that, that's how Sims operate apparently. I'm not gonna utilize pancakes. And you get like this magical box and stuff and then you can jump in and go and visit Spooky Town, Magic Town, Horror Town. You can visit town that's got magical powers and it's a sunday right it's a day of rest i'm talking shite so that's why you can go see her she's a janitor for two lots there so she's even more talented than the sims one arguably and she's still employed honestly love that for her like she's got three jobs going and then in the sims 2 and the sims 4 which are both later on in the timeline she's not really featured at all but she does be featured in the sims 4 slightly which is a little bit weird so in the sims 4 there's something called the katrina doll it's a decorative item and it says my mother never allowed herself to be photographed though I recall she looked quite a lot like the Katrina doll said by Bone Hilda environment one personally I think that that environment should be at least a solid three but that's neither here nor there so that's a reference that we've got in the sims 4 but apart from that she's just not mentioned so this is where stuff starts to get a little bit interesting because if we look at the way supernaturals are treated in the sims 3 versus the sims 1 theories start to arise hens am i setting the scene for you is this like a true crime video but in the sims he is hooked so in the sims 3 like i said earlier supernatural beings that can just walk freely really it's not confined to one place humans and supernaturals kind of live together in harmony nothing's really wrong some people are a little bit in secret right but aren't we all hiding apart of ourselves they might just be shy and then in the sims 1 supernatural beings are kind of pushed away in their own little corner of magic town away from the rest of the world now hence this part of the video is not my theory this comes from sim nostalgia on tumblr so i'm just going to say i'm just going to take the time out now to say please follow them on tumblr not my theory it'll be linked in the description if it's not i've purely just forgot to remind us on thank you hence my personal alarm clocks i'm going to read the theory out now it's been stated several times in sims canon that supernaturals and non-sim creatures are a known part of sim society if that's the case there are some troubling implications to the the sims universe in the sims 3 which is a prequel of the first two games we see several types of supernaturals freely living among the general population it seems that there are some discriminatory laws in place that won't allow werewolves to travel internationally it seems like a fairly supernatural positive society why is it then that in the sims 1 which canonically happens 25 years after the events of the sims 3 relegates all supernaturals to magic town and has strict laws governing magic usage outside of one's home or outside of magic town additionally only witches are allowed to live outside of this area. Are other supernaturals being made to live outside of city limits? It's not because they're being made to keep their magic uses secret upon entering the neighbourhood. Each family is given a magic kit. So why? We're told in The Sims 3 that the Sim Nation military has recently become aware of alien existence in a newspaper story and are planning some sort of action. Could it be that this developed into a full-blown conflict in 25 years and Sim Nation's populace became xenophobic and suspicious of all non-Sim creatures? Is that why everyone finds Dana and Nina so suspicious after Bella's disappearance? Now, I am just going to say what I think is suspicious about Dana and Nina is the fact that they turned up in town the day that Bella Goth went missing. It do be suspicious that they did turn up on the same day 
That's all I'm saying. Anyway, is it that bias rearing its ugly head? We know that there's still a culture of discrimination and distrust due to pollination technician and general buzz's relationship. And why is Bella's disappearance being so focused on? She's on every milk carton. Might it be that Bella's disappearance is only being so widely publicised in an attempt to further manipulate public opinion against the supernaturals? Every sim fears supernaturals in The Sims 2 besides knowledge sims. What aren't we being told? And that's that's a very interesting theory, actually, as to why Bone Hill is not included in The Sims 2 and The Sims 4. And I do respect that theory. I really do. And I think it's really cool. If we use that to fill in the gaps that we've got, that is like, honestly, like, I'm fucking hooked on this theory. Like, yes, this is very deep lore. But... But I just don't give EA that much credit. Like, I don't think that EA could have thought about this. Like, I think this is all down to the Sims community. So I don't think that this is actually why EA haven't included her. I just don't think that they asked about Bone Hilda. And I'm going to scream and shout every single day, hypothetically, until we get the justice that is necessary to bring Bone Hilda back. But basically, she's an absolute queen. Even if you don't play a supernatural family, just having her there is 10 out of 10 amazing. She does break the suspension of disbelief a little bit because you've got, like, literally a skeleton within a suburban family. But we've all got skeletons now because hen so just take her as a metaphor so that is the entire history of bone hilda she is absolutely stunning i don't know where she lost her body we haven't actually quite figured that one out yet but you know maybe maybe if she comes back in the sims 4 maybe we could find that out but there is also two places in the sims 4 she could have came back selva dorada because there's lots of skeletons there and also realm of magic but she was not so i am hurt i am offended it's personal attack against me juno birch is also on the same wavelength as us so i'm glad that you know we're starting a team right now it's me and juno against the world this is the collab that you've all been asking for both of us she and me me and she just bullying a year in uh giving us bone hilda and that's the crack i hope you enjoyed this entire history of video i'm sorry that it's been so long since i've done one i just i don't know i just wasn't uh, the kind of scared me but it the kind of scared us because <laughs> I haven't done one in a very, very long time. If the entire history of it is a series that you really like and want to come back, I'm more than happy to do that. I think the editing could work with it. Could make it a spooky story. <gasps> Oh, BuzzFeed Unsolved Who? I don't know her. I only know Plumbella's entire history of series, bitch. Thank you all very, very much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Please go give Sim Nostalgia a follow on Tumblr. Also, if you do want entire history of, leave them in the comments down below so I know who to do. Thank you. I love you all, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, 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 bye guys. What you know about me? What you, what you know about me?